Uh, spawning here in the lower right corner of Heavy Rain here in the Season 3 of the Acer Team Story Cup Week number 1. Trying to represent Dignitas, hoping to God he can bring his team through. It's going to be Dignitas Bling. And we have some non-believers in chat. I see some people already talking about him bombing out of WCS. But it's a different environment when you play the Acer Team Story Cup. You're comfortable sitting at home. You're not... The pressure of WCS isn't there. I would give Bling a fair chance versus Ian. Uh, speaking of which, spawning in the top left, Heavy Rain, the Red Zerg player from Yoey Flash Wolves. Ian. Now granted, Zerg versus Protoss on this map can be quite fickle. I think it's a good way to describe that. As, uh, there's been controversy about Swarm Hosts. So this map is a Swarm Host favor, or favored, yada yada yada. But I think for Bling... He plays... It's really hard to describe Bling's playstyle to someone who's never seen him play before or hasn't seen a lot of Protoss in general because he's not exactly like Arthur or Stardust. You're not going to see him do these really cheesy all-ins non-stop relentlessly. But at the same time, he's also not exactly got the... I wouldn't... I wouldn't necessarily think Bling's got the best end game when it comes to Protoss. But you watch his games, and a lot of it comes from like the mid-game, the sort of almost late-game stage, where he's able to get past his opponent before he gets to that insane 200-200, 7,000 bank mark. So, if Bling doesn't let this go on too long, and he doesn't let Ian get to this point where he's starting to abuse things like Swarm Host, then maybe he'll be alright. Alternatively, though, for Ian, one of Bling's biggest weaknesses is kind of his early game. You watch him early on, and... Quite frankly, Bling, as much as I love him, when we cast him and go for StarCraft especially, uh, it seems to be where he gets caught with his pants down. That being said, we'll see how this ends up panning out. I'm really excited to see how this goes, because again, it could be either match point after this. So, if uh, to explain the context of this, guys, it's a best of nine between these two teams, a best of one between these two players. Uh, everyone who wins puts a point towards their team. But if Bling loses this... Then Complexity slash Dignitas will be on their last life, and they'll have the option of either resurrecting a player that's already played or sending out somebody new. Alternatively, because Yoey Flash Wolves has such a big advantage already, they've only played Haas and Ian. They've got Sun, they've got Lenok, they've got other players waiting to play, and it's kind of scary for Blink to think about, like, okay, I took out Ian, but now I got like three other Zerg players I gotta go through still as well. At any rate, hopefully that's not going to worry about him too much. I, I've talked to players too, like, in the past I've asked Penguin, I've asked, jo I've had him ask Jokshi for me, saying like, you know, where's the strategy for this, uh, kind of like, com casual conversations, and a lot of the time the players don't really care. Like, we talk about this on, on stream a lot, and you'll hear it a lot, because it has to be on the mind of the managers and the people who are selecting and making charges of the team captains, of like, who comes out next, who do you play against next, what map's coming up as well. But players are just like, whatever, I'm here to play, I'm here to win focus on the game it do they don't really worry about what's coming up next so I don't know who's in charge of Bling I don't know who's in charge of Ian but I hope that they're keeping in mind the fact that there are still pretty scary players in the rosters of each team oh can I actually get poked around a little bit because I mean they could resurrect Teffel uh, so I'm talking about Dignitas here they could play a new player like Hengelisk. Um I can't I actually don't know the full roster because of the co the fact that the teams are allied with another, one another I don't know if they have full access to all of complexity and all of Dignitas but uh, it's a little bit sad that Trimaster's gone. Uh, for those who didn't catch last season's First Acer Team Story one. Cup, Trimaster had some really awesome games representing Complexity. So he's unfortunately no, uh, he's like retired and done for at this point. So Complexity doesn't have that uh, in their roster. So he's not someone waiting on deck. At any rate, enough theory crafting for now. We got a couple links gonna poke up here. Unless you, of course, should be able to keep these from doing too much. I would like him to die for that metabolic boost, though. It looks like, yeah, he's going to do just that. So, tries to get past the sentry. No force field. Does force field. Okay. This tells him a couple of big things right off the bat. While he doesn't see anything with these lings, the overlord passes through the back. He sees no stargate yet? Wait, how did... How did he not see the stargate? Okay, whatever. I don't understand overlord pathing. But he doesn't see the stargate. But if you force field that desperately this early, you know it's because you're trying to hide something. More lings do manage to squeeze by, though, and Ian's already in the base of bling. Oh my god, it forces an overcharge even. Uh, Ling's gonna run towards the natural base now, and the Mothership Corps should be able to clean this up. Uh, while this happens, the Oracle does start its way across the map. We got some Phoenixes as a follow up, which is a bit of a curious thing to see. You don't often see Phoenixes as a follow up to this, but. Uh, looks like Lings will be driven out of the base. Phoenix, in the meantime, could... Or not Phoenix, sorry. Oracle could have gone for the Queen, but instead opted to go for some drone kills. This is kind of limited him around 6 or 7. Maybe 8 if he's really ballsy, but I don't think that Oracle's going to get out alive. No. If there's one Queen, it's different. But with two Queens there, unfortunately, couldn't quite get away. So the Worker kills? I don't really like that. 7 Worker kills for an Oracle? The scariest thing about an Oracle isn't the Oracle's damage itself, it's the threat of it coming back for round two, of, of the fact that you have to leave queens in your mineral lines, that you have to have enough spore crawlers to make sure that it doesn't kill you. 
Uh, but with it being dead, that's Ian taking a big breath going like, Oh, thank God. I don't have to worry about that anymore. So unfortunately for Bling, the Ling's getting into his base early, losing that Oracle. These are two pretty bad things to start off the game for him here. Uh, but he has followed up with Phoenixes, and he might trick Ian into thinking it's Phoenixes. If he's actually going to go Immortal Sentry off of this, but he fakes Phoenixes, that would be the sickest mind game. Because, of course, then Ian's going to be worrying about... Well, actually, it wouldn't be that sick. Actually, I take that back. Because the counter to Phoenixes is the same as the counter to <laughs> Immortal Sentry, where you just get a lot of Hydralists as quickly as possible. But Phoenix is going to clean up this other Overlord. Pew, pew, pew. That's going to go down. Yeah. Uh, Mothership Core working on the rocks while this is happening too. I actually, what I love watching when players do is when they take these rocks down to like say 100 health, 5 health, 10 health. Like you don't completely knock down the rock tower, but you leave it there as an option to if uh, if someone's coming. If you knock it down too early though, it's easy for someone to just simply truck on through it. But I think Ian, predicting the Hydralis, has gone for that faster robotics bay. I like this as well. So Ian looks like he's going to be playing that Roach Hydralis style. If he does do this, the question remains on whether he stays on layer tech or not. Roach Hydra on layer can be scary, but Colossus counter that pretty nicely. And even Corruptors, to an extent, don't really deal with Colossus too well. Vipers are kind of the badass way to go. If you get Roach Hydra with Viper, and you've got good control of your Vipers, I almost feel that's an unstoppable strategy. I only say this because Abducts can be so powerful if used correctly. You're going to need good High Templar position. You're going to need a lot of Phoenixes if you want to zone them out. Vipers are hard to deal with. But not looking to go for the quick hive tech anytime soon. He needs units, and he can't afford to go for tech if he's getting a lot of Hydralisks. So, for now, we're going to see Ian stick on the layer tech. But I hope he doesn't stick on it for too long. Moving across the map, though, looks like he wants to set up an attack towards the third base of Bling. This is kind of where Bling's getting into his comfort zone, though. This is, uh, I don't know, he's got some decent sentries. He's got this awkward push, though. I say comfort zone, but what is he doing? He just lets the Ling attack him? Those force fields get nothing accomplished. Uh, then, there we go. That last one closes to them in so the Zealots can attack. But still, this was a very awkward move out of the Bling that I feel costs him too much. Like, while well, he gets a good trade off here, he's going to lose the Mothership Core. Tries to recall. That doesn't happen. So there's no overcharge for defending this attack coming. I mean, there's 30 Lings on the way. He's already burnt way too many force fields that he can't actually wall this off fully. Not for another, I think, 10 seconds. That was another force field. Yeah, almost failed. But not quite yet. Yeah, the Colossus is going to be a bit scary, but it's got no extended Thermalance. The Hydralis, even without the Groove Spines, can move into this. Or they do have Groove Spines. I thought they went for uh, Muscular Augments first. So, Hydralis have the same range as the Colossus right now. we got some Lynx flooding in on top of this. <coughs> but the Zealots are going to do a nice little job of closing that wall gap. Colossus in no real danger. Bling is actually going to hold this. And Ian needs to stop flooding units into this. Uh, he's going to he's gonna lose a lot if he keeps doing this. So, yeah, backs up finally. Bling, let's be honest though guys, that should have been some that should have been a fight where if he had never moved out early. Whoa, what are you what? Guys, what are you you're you're drunk. Go home. Go on, get. Anyways, if he didn't move out with those zealots in the sentries, if he had stayed in his third a little bit longer. Like, I mean obviously he had no he didn't have an observer. He didn't know he was gonna get caught. But if he did have all those units and all those force fields, I think he would have just absolutely wrecked Ian's attack. And if Ian had lost everything, a counterattack would have happened and Bling would be in a really good spot, but now he's sitting here with Colossus, and he's in an awkward spot where he doesn't have any energy on these sentries. He doesn't have a lot of sentries, and he doesn't really have a way to go for an attack, and if he does, it's going to cost him, and oh god, oh god, the Mutalist swap, I thought it was going to be Corruptors, but even if it was Corruptors, there's still no anti-air, there's only sentries available. There's, there's zealots here, but no stalkers, Blink is on the way, but it's not here, Phoenixes are being churned out, but perhaps too late, a second Stargate's being thrown down, I think he saw or caught wind of this. I think the Observer must have seen something, so this is a really dangerous spot for Bling to be in. A couple of Stalkers and a Phoenix will try and thwart this, but it's not going to be easy, that's for sure. And if these Mutalists take a sharp turn, they can pick off that Mothership Core, they can pick off Sentries. Without Blink, there's no mobility to respond to this. And it looks like he was hoping there would be a fourth room to pick off too, but that's not going to be the case. Blink didn't play that greedy, but still, third base under attack, and Overcharge is forced out. A couple probes go down, but the Phoenixes... Are going to give Hot Pursuit unless uh, turns around to kill him. I uh, would do the Fleet Beacon on the way. I mm, I think Blink's thinking this is going to be way too much of an investment in Mutalisks, but it's not. You go for the Fleet Beacon, you go for the Double Stargates, and you get Phoenixes with Anion Pulse Crystals to outrange units. But he's going for three. Uh, not three, sorry. Two Stargates. I mean, the Phoenixes will be nice. They'll certainly assist in dealing with the Hydralisks, but I think Blink has misread this situation, guys. It's not going to be Mass Mutalist. He's not going to be investing in upwards of 20 of them. What he has is all he's going to have. 
Moving into the mid game too, Bling is going to go Anion Pulse Crystals. Oh no, he's going double Stargate Anion Pulse Crystals versus what is a lot of Hydralis Remax and combined with Corruptors. Corruptors already soak hits from Phoenixes so well because they're armored units, and Corruptors have like a base armor of like one or two or something absolutely stupid. Uh, so the Phoenixes just absolutely do nothing, and I'm saying absolutely too much. Absolutely, absolutely. There we go, get out of my system. But Roach is here, Hydralis are here. The Force Fields are not, and unfortunately neither is a Photon Overcharge. Cannon's going to be torn down right away, and Corruptor's uh, base armor too. There you go. So Phoenix has only hit them for five, unfortunately. But uh, the Colossus are in such a good position. They're actually taking a pretty good engagement here. However, the Stalkers aren't focused firing down the Corruptors. There we go. Now Blink Forward will focus them down. And with the Colossus standing, he'll be able to beat back Ian's forces. Uh, the Colossus, well, you know, an important part of the army. The Phoenix is over here. Chickens and off the Mutalist. So the natural base is going to take a couple of probe losses. But in the end, Blink holds once again. And he holds really well this time. Not quite the desperate hold that we saw before. Does he go for a counterattack? It looks like, well, he is going to go for a counterattack. I'm not sure I'm in love with this idea. He's pushing a little bit blindly here. He's got that one observer out, but he's seen the amount of Hydralis and the Roaches waiting for him. And the reason he won that fight at his third was because of the positioning behind the mineral line. Nothing could push into those Colossus. This time gets right on top of them. The Colossus are, I feel, a non issue as the uh, Corruptors start taking them out very quickly. However, the Phoenixes are Graviton beaming some of the Hydralisks, but. As predicted, there's just a little bit too much brute force here. Hydralis and Roaches will push back the Stalkers. A very awkward Mothership Core will be out of position once again and will probably go down. Oh no, oh no, okay, pulls it back. Oh, but the Corruptors, ooh, the Corruptors can kill it. Uh, Stalkers are going to try and get a couple kills here. I like the control here on the Blink, and this is one of those rarer ZVPs, guys, where we're seeing a lot of trading, a lot of back and forth, almost a tug of war here on the eastern half, of, or the western half of the map. But there's no Colossus. Void Rays are coming out. There's going to be an overcharge, sure, but, I mean, realistically, Bling is, I don't know, awkward as far as his defense goes. This is looking a bit scary out of Ian, but Bling should be able to hold this with good control and decent micro. Gets away from this with the overcharge, and let's not forget, now that the Void Rays are out, as soon as he takes out these Corruptors, the Void Rays will go on... They go absolutely ham on top of these units, but focusing the Hydros instead of the Roaches is not the way to do it with the Void Rays. Talk about a waste of DPS continuing to blink like crazy underneath us, though. Blink might have good micro with his stalkers, but he's a little bit lazy with his Void Rays. That's going to cost him a little bit here. Still opting to push forward a little bit, snipe off a couple Roaches, fall back, snipe off, fall back, but level 3 weapons is so close to finishing. Once these finish up, it's going to be a little bit better for Blink to defend, but his fourth base under attack now, too, while this is happening. And Ian has got five bases on the other half of the map. Doesn't care that Blink's stuck on three because he can just keep pressuring here. Sort of soft containing, if you will. And the army supply league, guys. Look at the army count there in the bottom of the overlay. It's double that of Blink's. And Blink is still trading out really nicely, granted. But that's only going to last for so long. Warping in more stalkers and blinking like crazy, trying to retain as many units as he can. The Zerglings flooding in are adding a ton of buffer for these Roaches to do more damage. The three Hydralists are doing a lot behind this too. And Corruptors are spewing corruption on top of the stalkers. Meanwhile, Mutalist actually got into the natural base while this was happening. Didn't even see him remake those. 44 workers killed. Going to start picking off the pylons. Oh no! The Colossus gets stopped dead in his tracks. The Mothership Core goes down. Bling is officially being overrun at this point. Even if he cleans up this third base, he has no answer to the Mutalisks. Good game is going to be called. Ladies and gentlemen, this puts Complexity Dignitas on match point. One more loss, and they're out. They're oot. They're going to be oot of the host. No doot. I'm Canudian. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why I did that.